and welcome to another vlog. Um, it's the weekend, it's Saturday, and I've just completed, well, I was going to say my first week of university in Italy, but technically I started on Wednesday, and I only had stuff to do on Wednesday and Thursday, so Friday I didn't have anything. Um, so I suppose I've completed my first two days of uni in Italy, and honestly, I am so, so happy to be here already. The first day we had like a welcome presentation, um, where it was just kind of like, you know, welcoming us, <laughs> as the name suggests, but it wasn't um, intense or anything. And then afterwards they did like a guided tour of the city, um, sharing a bit of the history of Mantova, and I really enjoyed it. And even on the first day I made so many friends, I'm so happy, um, because after the welcome presentation a bunch of us went to grab lunch together. Um, so I've already met loads of people from my course, and honestly everyone here is so sweet and so friendly, so it's very easy to make friends. Um, it's just... Um, so nice and I feel so lucky and then on Thursday um, we had our first project um, class so we had a lecture um, and a kind of introduction to what work we're going to do this semester which is really nice and I found out as well that there's going to be a trip to Rome like a study trip to Rome to study some um, of the works of the Itali Italian masters of rationalism and so like the architects and yeah, I'm really excited for that as well, so I'll be vlogging in Rome a little bit in October. But I'm just really excited to start more lectures and get more into the project and the course. And yeah, I'm basically it's a success so far and I'm really happy. But it's the weekend and I thought today I would start sightseeing a little bit in Mantle because I haven't actually seen that much in terms of museums and what there is around. So I thought today I would go to Palazzo Te, which is a palace. <laughs> um, and yes, it's kind of further south in Mantova, so I haven't even passed it because it's not that close to where I live, so it's not something that I've just passed on my walks. So I'm looking forward to going there and sharing that with you. And yes, let's go. Palazzo Te was constructed between 1525 to 1535 for the Gonzaga family by the architect Giulio Romano. Considered to be one of the best examples of a Mannerist Renaissance villa, it is located just outside Mantova's city walls and was designed as a holiday home for feasts, parties and leisure. Known as the abode of the gods, the architecture draws inspiration from Roman villas, with open Doric colonnades and large green spaces. Every part of the villa was designed by the architect Giulio Romano, both internally and externally, from the main structure and the ceilings and floors, to smaller details like the fireplaces and decorative frescoes. The land the villa sits on was originally the site of the Gonzaga family's stables. When Romano came to Mantova, Federico Gonzaga commissioned him to renovate the stables into a small residence to restore energy in a place of peace and calm away from the city. However, upon seeing Romano's model for his proposal of a brand new villa, which was considerably larger and grander than what he commissioned, he ordered construction to start on the palazzo. Palazzo Te was often used by the family, and welcomed many famous people among its guests, such as the Emperor Charles V on two occasions in the 1530s, and later King Henry III of France in 1574. Visiting Palazzo Te, I felt like the whole time I was looking up, because the ceilings were the most beautiful part of each room, each one ornately decorated and painted. In fact, upon construction of the shell of the palazzo, it took another 10 years of work by plasterers, carvers and fresco painters to decorate the interiors. One of the most impressive rooms of Palazzo Te has to be the Sala dei Giganti, or Room of the Giants. I had not researched the palazzo before going, so it was a wonderful surprise to enter this room and be transported to a world of fantasy. The walls and ceiling meet at a curve so that the limits of the room disappear, and together with the scale of the painting, it is truly spectacular. As well as the main palace, there was an art exhibition with paintings by Federico Zandomeneghi, an Italian Impressionist painter. I was previously unfamiliar with his work, so as a fan of Impressionist art, I enjoyed learning more about him and his paintings. 
There was also a museum in the attic holding the Gonzaga collection, a collection displaying antique coins and systems of measurement from the province of Mantova. From jugs to measure volumes of liquids, to models for tiles and bricks, this perhaps rather unusual collection was actually very interesting to walk around, and I particularly liked being able to see the attic space they were displayed in, because the structure of the vaulted ceilings was visible from above. The last stop of my visit was the apartment of the Secret Garden, located at the far end of the lawn. This was created by Federico Gonzaga as a private and hidden place away from the main palazzo. The floor is covered in river pebbles, which conceal tubing used for water games, while frescoes adorn the walls. The grotto at the end of the garden is entered through an opening made with real rocks. It was commissioned by Duke Vincenzo Gonzaga in the 1590s, and was completed by his son, Duke Ferdinando, in the early 1600s. The interiors are richly ornamented with shells, coloured stones, mother pearl and crystals, and the overall effect is otherworldly. After my visit to the palace, I sat in the adjacent park to read and go for a little walk. It was my first time in this park, and it was nice to find a large green space in the city because there aren't that many, so I'm sure I'll be coming back here often. Then, after stopping for a coffee and something sweet to eat, I bumped into some friends who told me about an antique book and print fair happening that weekend. I am a big fan of antiques, so of course I knew I had to go and have a look around, so that's where I headed next. The fair was located in the Museo Diocesano Francesco Gonzaga, a former convent in Piazza Virgiliana, and I really enjoyed browsing the beautiful collection of books and art for sale. Hello, so I'm back in my apartment now, and I had such a wonderful time um, visiting the Palazzo Te because it's so beautiful, um, honestly. I think the most spectacular part about that palace is the ceilings. Every room that I went in, I was just looking at the ceilings the whole time because um, they were painted so beautifully and it was stunning to walk around. Um, I think the palace is currently under construction because they had some rooms that had construction workers and like scaffolding or ladders and stuff. Um, so probably they're restoring certain areas. And I know that from some point in October, there's going to be an exhibition on Rubens and his paintings and art. So I'll definitely be going back when that's um, up to have a look around that. But I'm glad that I'm starting to explore Mantova and um, I hope you enjoyed looking around the museum too. And afterwards I went to have a coffee and read a bit and actually um, I bumped into, well while I was sitting down, two friends from university walked past, um, which was lovely to bump into them and have a little chat. And they told me that they had just been to an antiques book fair thing that was happening. So I was like, I need to head there after having my coffee because anyone who knows me knows that I love um, antiques and books and antique books is just like <laughs> my favorite thing in the world so I had a look um, and they were lots of good things and obviously I ended up buying stuff because <laughs> um, I couldn't go and not get something. The first thing that I got was this beautiful print and um, it's from the 18th century and it's stunning. It's called, um, well actually it doesn't have it in English, L'Odorat has it in French, um, L'Odore. It's basically um, smell, like the sense of smell, so it's a series of five prints that it comes out of and this one is based on smell um, because it's out of the five senses and basically, <laughs> I, don't know if I can't see what I'm showing you, but it's an interior scene, a perspective of a palace and I just love it. The view of the garden and the interiors and there's um, women smelling roses, I suppose to tie in with the theme of scent, but I just love this print so much. Um, so when I saw it, I thought it'd be perfect um, for my apartment. Um, it'd be good if I could find a frame to put this in. At least it's got a little border, so even if I put it on a shelf like this, it does look quite nice. But if I could get a really pretty antique frame for this, it would look beautiful. But I just thought it was perfect. And having just visited a palace, obviously, maybe I was inspired by that. And then I got two um, books. The first one that I got is an architecture one and I got it because it's filled with lovely um, 
architectural drawings of houses and like manor houses more so larger ones and I like that they've got the elevation sections plans all sorts of drawings and I just thought it'd be cool to flick through and um, study these buildings a little bit I don't know and uh, maybe draw some inspiration for composition or maybe a method of presenting drawings but I just thought it was really nice um, and it's an Italian so you know I'll practice my Italian a bit by if I read this, but I liked this bit. And then I got one more that's called Ricordo di Roma, Memory of Rome. And basically it's a little booklet that's filled with photos of Rome. And like I said earlier in this vlog, I'll be going on a study trip to Rome soon. So I just thought that this was really lovely that I could look through the photos and um, yeah, it just made me excited to go there soon. Also, I thought this kind of thing is a better souvenir than something you can buy in Rome. So I just really like this and in anticipation of the trip, I got it. And at the back, it's got a little map of Rome as well, which is rather nice. So those are my purchases from the Antiques Fair today. And it's happening today and tomorrow. And I didn't know about it. So thankfully I ran into my friends and um, later they actually invited me out to get a drink this evening so I'm really looking forward to going out with them. That's one thing that I love about studying in Italy. I feel like everyone here is A, very warm, friendly, um, it's very easy to make friends, B, everyone's very spontaneous. So for example, after my first project class at university, when it was over, everyone was like, who wants to go and get an Aperol spritz? And we just all went out um, for an aperitivo, so we just had drinks and um, sat outside and it was so nice. Um, and the day before that, like after the welcome presentation spontaneously as well, um, a bunch of friends were like, who wants to go and grab lunch and just chill for a bit? So I feel like it's just very social and I like that aspect of studying here so far. Also, the university is small. In my year group, there's only um, 80 students studying my course. And then the town is very small as well. So like I said, I was sitting at a cafe and just bumped into friends because that's the way it is. And I feel like when you're out and about you just bump into people because <laughs> it's a small town so yeah I like that aspect of studying here but it is quite late and I have not eaten yet I think it's like nearly six o'clock <laughs> apart from having my coffee and a little biscuit I've not had a proper meal so I'm going to cook some lunch now well lunch slash dinner um I'll eat and I'll get on with a little bit of editing because <laughs> I need to edit some vlogs and then I'll head out with my friends so it's been a really lovely day and I was thinking that potentially for a future video I might do a Q&A so if you have any questions for me whether that be questions about me or about Italy or my studies here or anything then comment them down below or you can alternatively message me directly if you don't want to comment them and I hope you enjoyed following me along today if you did please like this video and subscribe to my channel to join me on more adventures thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time bye